All right, welcome back. In case you're just joining us, it's time for our conversation right now. Joining me are my guests, three gentlemen here in the studio. I'll start from my immediate uh, right. Professor Benis Alkonkwa uh, was the former director general at the National Research Institute for Chemical Technology. He's currently a professor at the University of Port Harcourt. Welcome, Professor Alkonkwa, to the program. Thank you very much. All right, to my far left uh, is... Idrisu Gata, who is the Director of Federal Produce Inspection. He's a Director of Federal Produce Inspection uh, Service. That is, Federal Produce Inspection Service is one of the agencies with the roles in the exports, uh, um, in the export of products in Nigeria. Yes. Let me put it that yes. way, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, so what? It's a department under Federal Ministry, Ministry of, of Industry, Industry, Trade and Investment, uh, yes, yes. in charge of export of agri non agricultural Agri produce. produce. Yes, we'll come to that export. in a bit. Welcome to the program. <laughs> All right, I also have to my uh, far uh, left, just not as far as Idris Sugata, is Dafang Idi Sule, Deputy Director of Federal Produce Inspection Service. Welcome, gentlemen, to the program. It's not, so, uh, it's not so common to have uniformed men on my show. I don't know. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, welcome to the three of you. Let's get started very quickly. Let me start with Prof. Like I did say during my intro, when I am my colleague, I was having a chat earlier on telling him about what I'll discuss. I've read some researches that call Neem as the green treasure. Yes. And uh, it's coincidental that I'm also wearing green today. <laughs> Not that I planned it, but okay. I think it just happened. <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> so um, green treasure, Neem, uh, I think it's commonly called Indian lilac. Lilac. You know, um, why, why the emphasis on Neem? Really, can you speak to me about that? Neem is an, an amazing tree of the world, just as you said. Um, some kill, call it green treasures, um, some call it the wonder tree of the 21st century because of its amazing benefits in every area of human life. Neem has a role to play, whether as health for health benefits in the agriculture, uh, as pesticide, as organic f fertilizer, then in the, in, in, in the cosmetic world, it's used as formulations. It's so in now almost every uh, uh, formulation for, for human uh, skin and development. So it's a, a wonderful tree. And every part of the name, tree has a benefit. You know, the, 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 the leaves and the, the, the seed, they constitute a, a, a great deal in trying to uh, keep life healthy. The, 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 the neem, the, the leaves makes uh, people uh, pro protect it can. Uh, it is used in the treatment of uh, eye um, infection. infection. Um, even leprosy, they have used it uh, in, the, in leprosy, and so many, so many things, so many things. Then the oil. The oil is excellent in pre uh, pro production of all sorts of uh, pesticides. And right now, this organic pesticide. The most uh, inventive uh, pesticide in the in the world now is organic, and it's you know is going very uh, well. Most uh, former pesticides are synthetic pesticides because of their uh, residue, the residue they leave, you know, in, in, mm. in the course of their use. So uh, it is being discarded now. And this name has come to take the place, a very prominent place, in the use mm. of pesticides. Name is it what they call Dogon Yaro? Dogon Yaro is the name, popular name in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just needed and us to establish that because <laughs> yes. some people may be wondering what we are discussing. What what was Nancy and her guests saying? What's name 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 is that? Is the Dogon, is Yaro, the Dogon Yaro tree we are talking yes. about? That some of us have at our backyard. Exactly. Okay. You All know, right. You know, it's been used over the years to 
treat malaria. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what uh, people know it uh, uh, for. Mm -hmm. But there are several uh, mm -hmm. benefits for, for use for it. Okay. I'll come back to you, Prof. Let, 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 let me come to the director, uh, Idrisu Agata, Director of Federal Produce Inspection Service. Your agency is involved in exports. That is the process yeah. of uh, agri uh, produce. Why is your agency quite interested uh, in this? Okay, let me start uh, by this. Federal Produce Inspection Service is a department under the Ramis of Industry, Trade and Investment mm -hmm. in charge of quality assurance of all the agricultural products meant for export. In addition, fumigation and uh, this infestation of the vessels, uh, conveyance, other vehicle or vessels that have to take uh, all this produce to the days to their own destination. So actually we have been using chemicals before, but why we are advocating, advocating on NIM now? NIM has no residual effect mm. as compared to the chemicals. Because application of any chemical, whatever it may be, there is, should be a residual effect after the effect, after the application. But neem doesn't have. Number one, you can consume it. You can use it for other, other means for curing. So what I mean by the residual effect is that uh, it doesn't remain in the body after yeah, the application. It doesn't have uh -huh. effect on the uh, mm -hmm. applicator and uh, even the produce. produce. Yes. So, and um, by the way, now we go on organic. So, using neem is an added advantage that uh, if it has come to stay, you see that uh, all those uh, effects of rejection after the application, all those ones will come to pass. Like the way they rejected our beans sometime uh -huh. ago. So, that's why we're advocating on neem. It's an mm -hmm. organic uh, process. If been, uh, been applied and it doesn't have any residual effect after effect. application. Okay. Mm. Let me come to Mr. Dafangi Disule. Yeah, the director has spoken. What else? Of course, from what we're seeing right now, it means that neem plant is an industrial plant, sure. so to speak, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so just speak to me more about, perhaps he's talked about why uh, your uh, 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 department is quite interested in, in this. Yeah. Well, uh, as he rightly pointed out, the issue of rejection has been a very uh, serious issue within the export sector. Our exporters have lost enormous you know, resources due to rejection in the international market. And then uh, even the, 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 the farmers themselves have lost enormously. And that is why you know, we had to sit down and look at what is the best way out of this, you know, the whole uh, issue. And uh, we, you know, there was a meeting of all regulators, and that meeting was organized by CBN around 2017 in Lagos. And various scholars were invited, and um, the issue of pest control came in. And a particular, you know, researcher brought up the issue of NIM, and, and based on his findings on the researches he conducted, we are informed that it was very potent in handling the issue of pest you know, infestation on our agro commodities. And we took it, took it off from there. We started applying it you know, on our, in our activities in pest control. And we discovered that it was more potent you know, in actually handling the issue of pests. And we took it off from there. And that's why we're promoting it. So that the issue of losses on the part of our you know, farmers and exporters will be normal. And then, you know, the issue of the foreign exchange, that all these importers of these chemicals, you know, uh, the, the issue of the foreign exchange will be normal because the more they import, uh, the more our foreign exchange gets depleted. So that area also is going to be taken care of. And, you know, the, the, uh, as long as we, we take that shift 
to the agro uh, to the uh, organic pest control. Mm. I like the, the, the slants uh, which you came in from. I'll come back to you in a bit. He has actually said that there's been researches done. Is it being used now as fumigation, as in actively? And do people really know? Because it's not just about the research that was uh, conducted in your department. Do a lot of people know, like farmers? Because farmers, they, uh, we, we lose a lot, you know. Yes. Uh -huh. So do people really know and how much um, of this is going on right now? Mm. The currently, the, uh, uh, people have not known it much, okay. but uh, there's effort to bring it to, you know, to the for to the public, um, because the what just as uh, he said, what the pesticide does, uh, it is an antifeedant, and it controls up to 400 pests. In the in the in the in the in the farm or in, in the environment, which no other chemical pesticide pesticide could could do. That is this name. This name. Really. Yes, and it you know it's it has a broad spectrum that controls almost all <coughs> the pests you can think of, you know. And what it does is that it doesn't just kill them outright because if it does, the the ecosystem might 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 be imbalanced but it does it you know in a subtle way by act, a, 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 a antifeedant process it has a, a a way of causing the insects once they test the leaf which has that um, pesticide it will not go there again it will rather uh, prefer to starve to death oh. than go into so that is. So it will not kill the insect. It 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 will not kill it immediately. immediately. But insect can now gradually kill itself mm. by starving itself. Do you understand? Mm. Uh -huh. So uh, and it does so. Um, so uh, for use in uh, in the farm, let's say in the farm, uh, people have not known much about it in this country. But elsewhere, say in, in India or the US, they are now adopting it very much. So uh, this um, principle has now been looked into in the area of fumigation for to fumigate cr uh, good commodities that are to be exported. We've, had, we've seen the uh, the problem our Nigerian commodities face when they, they are exported. A lot of them uh, face rejection, either because of the residue, chemical residue that are used on them, or because they have uh, suffered some uh, degradation, some decay in the, in the course of being transported. But this pesticide uh, of neem, which is used, if you use it and uh, fumigate the, co the cabin where the, uh, the commodities are kept or even the goods themselves. You know, it, 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 it preserves them. It preserves these goods for a long, as long as you take it uh, to, the, uh, to the foreign country. And besides, it has no residue, you know, inherent in it. Mm. So it's one of is 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 a very good uh, um, material to be advertised and uh, promoted for use. And Nigeria is blessed in that we, we, we will not go to import the name. We have it all over the country. Mm. You know. I so. was I was coming to that. Uh, how much capacity do we have in terms of name production? Yes. You know, because like I said earlier, I know that Kebi State produces about 30 million of neem trees uh, annually. Uh, but I'll come back to you, Prof. L let me come to um, uh, Mr. Mr. Gatta. Mm. Do we, s since we were using chemical pesticides before, and you're trying to promote neem as an alternative for pesticides since they don't have residual effects and it's mm. better than what we used to do before, is it more expensive using neem 
than the chemical pesticides. You know, because from the research that was done, like it's you said, with the, yeah, with the CBN and co, uh, the research that was done, is it more expensive to produce neem as a pesticide than the ones being imported, other chemical pesticides? In fact, it's very cheap. Okay. Very cheap as compared to the chemicals we were using before. Because averagely, you can see in every corner, you can see neem. Mm. So even if you don't have a capacity of going to commercial large quantity, let's say if you have neem in your, your, your domain, uh -huh, there are some, some of these fruits that are falling this thing. So you can use it as a, a sort of a chemical, process it yourself, local processing. We'll come to that one later. Local processing, you process it and use it. So it's not something that you have to use a large sum of money if you don't have access to, to this thing. So right now there are some companies that are even doing it locally. So uh, the addresses of those ones will be communicated. Mm. Mm. So that's why we're shifting from, we're trying to shift and make advocacy for uh, from the chemicals to, to the neem. Because, because perhaps it will save us a lot of money. It will save us and uh, it doesn't have any residual effect mm. if you are using it. Either on the applicator or the, the produce you are applying it mm. and that is organic. Mm. Okay, Mr. Dafang, do you have additional things to add? Because I'm actually also interested in how much we can get in terms of neem production, yeah. just like the director has said, that you can find it anywhere. And I don't th even think that we deliberately even plant it. No. no. <laughs> do we deliberately really plant well, it? We was, uh, it was uh, during the, the program for the, uh, to control desertification. desertification. Yeah, the yes. Great Green Wall yes. program. So, okay. uh, yeah. so it was, if you go to the 16 border states of the north, north there's yeah. so much there. Mm. And it was planted. Okay. Yes. Okay, so. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the, the tree, as you said, is found all over the country. Cheaper to the chemical, uh, the the extract cheaper to you know to produce, mm. and then one other thing is that uh, when this chemical was, you know, uh, I mean the chemi the chemicals we were using initially, Federal Produce Special Service in pest control, was being used you know actively, we lost some of our staff. Mm. Yes, we lost some of our staff. So that actually is another additional information or, uh, or uh, zeal that pushed us to look for alternative. Because the chemicals ha have both residual e uh, effects on we, the human beings, mm. and also in the produce itself. So that is why we actually had to just go, you know, all out to get an alternative to these, you know, chemical pesticides that are being imported into the country. When did this alternative come up? When? We actually started on the issue of the alternatives in 2018. Okay, 2018, after the research, after, uh, the, after the CBN. Uh, after the CBN yeah, intervention, interventionist yeah. approach in 2017. And we have held some few you know, workshops here and there in promoti promoting it, especially in the north. And that's basically on beans and, uh, and other grains. You know, grains are found in the north. Mm. So we had to go all out on beans because beans, we took up beans. Because that was one of the products that has been heavily rejected in the international market. And so we had to take it up from there. And then that's why we're promoting it to ensure that all our exporters shift to it. If they want to get premium from the exports, this is just the way to go. So have, have we started seeing the exporters using that? At least those that are aware, have we started seeing them use that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. In Kano. Okay. They are using it massively now. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, in Kano, and the losses have reduced? The losses have reduced. So much. Mm -hmm. So much. So yes. much. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> <laughs> For you to say so much, Prof, <laughs> that means it's a wide gap no, from where we used to be. You actually need to go to the field and mm. see the impact. Yes, I wouldn't mind. No. At least our cameramen, you can send yes. them there. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. We'll to see, to see yeah. uh, for ourselves, so that yes. I will see myself. Yeah, in fact, yeah. right here in, in, in Kubwa, okay. there's a, a farm of about 20 hectares that is being grown purely on neem products. The, we have, apart from this neem pesticide we are talking about, another major product is the neem fertilizer, mm. which is a, 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 a byproduct of the extract. When you extract the oil from the seed, what is left is the 
neem cake. And that's what we use for fertilizer. So that one has all the, all the uh, qualities of fertilizer. And in addition to that, it, is, uh, it has pesticidal property yeah. and nematicida. That is, it kills nematodes. So um, if you can come there and see the impact, you know, we have grown, we have uh, harvested maize there. The taste of the maize is even better than using the NPK, that mm. is the chemical Health fertilizer. fertilizer. You know, from the, apart from the health benefits. We took the sample to, to uh, the laboratory at uh, this um, um, dam, this uh, dam here. And the analysis showed no single trace of uh, residue. Any, any, any residue. Mm. Yeah. Now let's talk about, um, uh, Director, let's talk about a bit of the processing. Is it the processing of, mm. yes. Yes. Okay. It's a, a very simple mm -hmm. process. Yeah. That is, uh, uh, it, it, it's graded. The, 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 the farmer in the field can easily do it. The leaves is, uh, is a pesticide. What you need is just to gather the leaves and squeeze it and extract. In its raw form? In its raw form. Like you do it like this? That's like right. Like you, you do bitter leaf? Exactly. Is that it? <laughs> is that it? You, <laughs> yes. you yes. wash it like you wash bitter yes. leaf? Yes. So okay. just take the that, Water. that liquid yes. and go and spray it. In fact, it's very strong. You even have to dilute it much further to be able to, you know, uh, mm. Do well in the in the in the. But farm. you you should dilute according to measures. I shouldn't just pour. Uh, but because yes, you dilute, uh, because there is no specific uh, uh, quantity of water you are asked to put on a particular leaf. Uh, by just mere looking at it, you know, or you get a small uh, number of uh, crops and test. If you apply it for about. Uh, 24 hours, if nothing happens, because if it is true, go, too strong, the leaves will it's wilt. It's shrink. Yes, it's shrink. shrink. For, so if it's okay, then you can uh, mm. do it in other ways. So after 24 hours, if it's too strong, the leaves will wilt. You'll be able to know that it is, the, it's the concentrated. liquid is concentrated. Then you add more water. Okay. Keep diluting. You, you know, the dilution is not, uh, there's no extent you can do in dilution. You can dilute it as much as you can, but uh, provided you are applying it maybe every other, uh, maybe once in three days or once in four days, if there is any, in any infestation in the farm, then after that you will see that everything has normalized, then you can now apply it once in two weeks, you see how the farm will just mm. be good. I'm getting, I'm getting an idea right yeah. That is for the leaf. Mm. Then for the oil, the when you extract the oil, the oil again, uh, in it, that is crude form. Just add the oil, about one, one part of the oil to, uh, to 50 parts of water. Okay. So very, very little is required. What you're saying now right now, I hope my viewers are discerning. These are business ideas. Yes. <laughs> so one part of the oil to about 50 parts, then shake it thoroughly. Shake it thoroughly and start spraying that's mm. what it takes it doesn't there's no uh, you know um, tedious or any extra knowledge mm. to be applied you know so when this is done you will see the result you know you will see the result manifesting in addition in mm. yes okay in addition to that in terms of the application uh, the oil if you if you have you know stored produce that's specifically where you know our area of uh, yes. interest mm. produce that are in storage mm. before you bag the produce take a little oil you know uh, rub it on the bag especially inside okay. before you pack the produce inside whatever produce it is once you apply it, you apply the oil that way in the bags before you you know, package the produce, the insects are gone. 
they are really? gone yeah. for for the whole season. Yeah. They are for gone. The can, can, like, can it be used for household? Come on. Yes, <laughs> can it be used it for household to store my food? Used. It sure. is the surface. Yeah. Really? The surface, yes. So, surface. so that you don't see like all those weavels or yeah. something. No, no. you don't see it. Ooh. Even even it, it. it's leaf. Mm. Mm. Uh, you can use it just as you plug the leaf like that. Mm. Mm. You can just put it on the back. On there's, the a, back. there's a bag of rice mm. as it's harvested. Yes. No insect will enter. Okay, I'm learning a lot from this show right rice, now. Rice, beans, today. Mm. you know, and all, and all, you know, uh, a host of other produce. Mm. And if, 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 even my small garden in the house, I've been battling with pests. Sometimes you see, we've tried to treat it and all of that. So I think I should try this. Yes. Neem, neem, neem try it today. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's something I can do myself. Of yes. course. Yes. Okay, yes. because yes. we've been battling for it now for like one year or so. I normally get fresh vegetables from the yes. from my yeah. own garden. Yeah. In your own garden also, you can, if you have a neem tree, get mm. the leaves, spray there to continue to deter de them. De de so that uh, at least... Uh, it will, apart, apart of serving as a fertilizer, mm. it will even control some pests that oh. are even within the soil there. So the cook, uh, boiling the leaf mm. is, is a bit more effective than, than washing it. Than washing than it. extracting the liquid raw. Mm. Yes. Okay. You wash it, you boil it, and uh, also use it. Mm. Uh, it's very effective. Then there's uh, another thing, the neem pesticide. Uh, the chemical pesticide, when you use it over some over a time, it uh, it, it it makes the insects to be resistant to them. So you either have to add, use it more, more of the pesticide, and it will affect the environment. But not so with the neem. The neem pesticide has no uh, the no persistence uh, uh, resistance resistance uh, effect. Mm -hmm. You know, and the um, it, it affects all the stages of insect, mm -hmm. both the larva, mm, both the, the pupa, pupa, every uh, which the chemicals do not. Mm. So there's a lot. So it can affect you know. from the egg stage to egg to stage. the adult stage to That's the final. Right. If I, oh. This is quite interesting. Yeah. I'm also interested in the the federal government budgeted, I think, 13.9 billion naira this year for pest control yeah. and my good, uh, what do you people call it? My English right now, uh, my, my migrate, yes. migration, there's pests that migrate. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, <laughs> let yeah. me put it there, yes. that birds that migrate yes. and um, zoonotic disease control. Mm -hmm. So the government this year has budgeted about 13.9 billion. Mm -hmm. Are you also talking to perhaps your colleagues in the Department of Veterinary uh, in the, the uh, Ministry of Agriculture, that yes. the uh, uh, Veterinary case. and Pest Control Department. Yeah. Yes, because they do have a department there. Mm, yeah. Have you been liaising with them on this kind mm. of findings? Because if you do liaise with them on this kind of findings, the budget even for the pest control may reduce. Mm. Since so we, much, drastically. Yes, drastically, since yes. we have this natural resource. So what we can concentrate on is zoonotic diseases mm -hmm. and some others. Director, uh, I want to take that. Actually, we synergize okay. in, the, in carrying out, like, uh, take example, in every meeting we have, workshop we have, is a collaboration of various MDs so that all these, uh, uh, take example, mean should actually be, uh, take control. So we synergize. So that the 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 goal should actually be effective in carrying out. So, like uh, take example, you made mention of uh, the last meeting at CBN. All the MDS were there. Then the processes were introduced. Then research was going on. So with all this one and uh, with advocacy, then everyone goes back to its own district to make uh, advocacy as it, imp it implies. Mm. Okay, in, in addition to that, actually we had planned to have uh, a stakeholders forum in respect of this. Okay. But COVID-19. Mm. In respect of the question I just asked? Yes. Mm. So that we'll see how we can scale it up mm. and see how some of these uh, areas we're talking about can be put to rest, mm. especially the migrating beds yes. and even some of uh, some uh, grasshoppers that you see affecting some regions, especially in the uh, uh, East Africa. 
Yes. They are affecting some. Yeah. Low are, cost I mean, and all Destroying all of that. crops yes. and all that. So all these are things that can easily take care of those. Uh, do I call them outbreaks? Mm. Yeah. Okay. And when this yeah. when this uh, um, pesticide, this name, is adopted, even it will play a very significant role in this pest control. Mm. One is uh, it is friendly to um, animals that are not destructive, like birds, like. Uh, uh, these pollinating insects, it doesn't affect them, you know. But uh, unlike other pest control chemicals, which are not, uh, they, they, they don't uh, discriminate, you could find that it could kill so many of the useful animals around. So uh, I think that uh, it's important that uh, this revelation is adopted, mm. you know. The, 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 the other question right now would be, are we currently earning from neem production? Since we have an abundance of it, especially in the north. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, are we currently like exporting? Mm. Because there are markets that are demanding for neem, like mm. China, the Asian countries, China, India, Japan yeah. are demanding for it. There are also some countries that are producing mm. neem, like US, Brazil, countries even in the Asia Pacific yeah. region. So are we currently producing neem? If yes, what is the capacity we are producing? And are we exporting? Because it will also come to your gates. Mm -hmm. the, the, production is, the production is very low. Mm -hmm. The level is very low because of uh, uh, lack of awareness. Um, and uh, the few, we have actually formed an association, NIM Association. But uh, the concentration now is on the fertilizer. Fertilizer, uh, using it to produce fertilizer. Um, so the and most of almost hundred percent of it is consumed, you know, within the country. There has not been effort to uh, export. But mm -hmm. what is being exported is the neem seed, not the okay. processed. The neem seed. In fact, before the uh, events of the uh, trouble in the south, in the northeast. Indians had started coming to Nigeria at Borno State to buy mm -hmm. the, the seeds because they use a lot of it. They use a lot. In, in 2008, India generated $2 billion on the neem oil alone. Mm. You know, so they come and build uh, good enough Nigerian neem seed has better quality than any other seed, neem seed in the, in the world. Really? Yes. Mm, yes. It Our neem seed is the best? Is the, the best. best. Yes. In the world? Yes. yes. We got and we are not earning money from it. That's you see what I always say right here on the show. No awareness. No, no yeah. awareness. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If we can develop that industry, the, 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 the hmm. significant you know, benefit will be enormous. Apart, apart, it will even start from uh, helping the, 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 the poor, poorest Pop, of the yes. poor. By picking neem, the seed alone, you could generate millions. You know, when we started it, um, we actually uh, uh, um, to, um, empowered some women, some women and their children to be picking the leaves. You know, and at least some of the, most of them we are making enough money to, to live their lives, you know. And f uh, we made, uh, we started building it up, uh, even created a market. The, the, late gov the then governor of Zamfara State gave us a land, you know, to, uh, which he ca we called international market. People were bringing the seed and the, the users were buying from them, you know. So right now we have uh, small, small producers, especially in Kano. We have up to 30 producers in Kano, just producing the oil and selling. Uh, Lagos is the main market okay. now. Where the oil is being bought? Yes, they okay. use it uh, to make soap mm. and all these uh, cosmetics. Cosmetics, yes. yes. That, that's, 
So, mm. but and even shampoo because I've seen new shampoo. shampoo for yes. women for our hair. Yes, yes. that yes. is good for the hair. Yes. Exactly. Mm. So they are, they are, they are, they are, it's so. But we need more enlightenment. Mm. On and it. that is what I'm trying to do yeah. today because I found out that we have so many resources that we can earn money from. Mm. We can also create jobs along the value chain yes, yes. Of, of different uh, sectors. Yes. Director, what else do you have to say? Because some, uh, you know, I'm a little bit flabbergasted, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, but but what else do you have to say? <laughs> okay, um, in fact, on final note, uh, I want to emphasize that uh, um, the name as we are going to have come to stay, number one, it is not injurious to applicators, it's not injurious to the producer you are applying it. And uh, actually, we thank uh, the region of uh, President Mohamed de Buhari that uh, has given us a faithful support even by promoting this type of uh, extract. And uh, the minister, uh, Otumba, Otumba Adeni. Richard, Adeni Adebayo. 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 That's Adebayo. the Minister of, uh, Trade, minister and of investment. Trade and Investment. Mm. And uh, the Permanent Secretary, uh, Dr. Nasser Borzo. But uh, they have uh, all of our challenges, they have been taking care of it. And uh, we wish that uh, the exporters should, that uh, we are advocating this one for us, they should be in compliance so that uh, the losses and the uh, rejects we have outside mm. should be reduced. Okay, ju just quickly, this rejecting, I think there was a project that was launched, or you people did, uh, zero, zero reject, reject yes. project, at least? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Okay, whether the deputy director will speak on, on yes, that? Because I, as you just said, reject. I remember there was yeah. a zero reject yes, yes. program. Yes. In fact, the zero reject program was, uh, the meeting we had in Lagos in 2017 with CVN was, as a, was, you know, a fallout of that zero reject program. In fact, it was, we asked the CBN to sponsor that meeting, and they sponsored it. It was attended by, you know, various MDS associated with Expo. NAQS was there. N NP NPC. NPC was there. NAVDAC was there. You know, we were all there, and we brainstormed. And fumigation being a core mandate of Federal Produce Inspection Service, we are asked to be meticulous in ensuring that anything that is going out of the country is only fumigated with this extract, so that the issue of rejection will not become a thing of the past. And since we started, not the compliance has not been very, you know, very because some people bought the the chemicals, pesticides, the, the chemical pesticides, mm. you know, in large quantity, and they felt well. We need to exhaust it before we start complying, although we kept on enforcing anyway. So the since we started that advocacy, the the issue the level of rejection has really gone down because the the focal point in this country that receives uh, the the notices of rejection of our agro commodities and share market you know has actually come up to say that the the level the the, the the level of notices has gone down and that is part of what we have been doing or the result of what we have been doing the advocacy we've been to Kano we've been to Ogoja we have gone to Lagos we have brought exporters together to inform them that this is just the best way to go. Mm. But uh, you can always be sure, Nigerians will always have our reasons for doing what we want to do. But we want to emphasize today that that is the safest way to go. To go. Yes. Which state produces uh, the most neem in Nigeria? Does the neem plant, which states? Because I, I know KB? the northern state. Okay, so it's the same KB? KB. KB. It's KB. Oh. Almost, in fact, all the states. All the states, states in yes. the northern states. states. Yes. yes. Yeah. But okay. that, that is just uh, coincidental. Mm. Every, every state in this country has the potential of producing, of uh, growing neem. So can, can it be produced man-made, apart from those that find themselves just growing anywhere? Yes, we yes. plant. You can yes. plant it. You, you can, can plant it using the seeds. Mm. Okay. In fact, mm. some, some states, like about some few years ago, some states uh, had that program to be planting at least 500, uh, no, 1 million Nim trees. Nim trees every year. And that is the governor of uh, KB. Okay, governor of governor KB. Governor of KB. Uh, mm. Yes. Mm. You know. Okay. Uh, the other question just before we go is, uh, I'm actually interested because of that 13.9 billion 
budget for pest control, <laughs> which pests really, um, which is the most, uh, or among the pests, which ones really troubles us the most? Is it grasshoppers? Of course, do we have locusts? We don't have locusts in Bishop. Well, uh, I think mm. why the federal government, you know, uh, approved such a song, mm. especially for Minister of Agric, or that I think was mostly utilized over there. Yes. Is because of the tomato blight yeah. that affected some tomato farms yes, some around Kaduna, ago. Kano, yes. and so on. Yes. And the governor of Kaduna State, too, got actively involved mm. in controlling that pest. So it was a tomato blight and some other pests that were ravaging tomato farms, especially mm. in the north. Mm. Okay. Prof, you have anything to add that perhaps we've not spoken about? Because I've learned a lot from this show, at least even for my own use mm. this morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can guarantee you I would, I would, I don't have a name tree, but of course I would look for, I would uh, look for I it. I can give and you boil it. Some. Yes, please do, Prof. <laughs> I'll boil it. Boiling is the most yes. potent. potent. Yes. Is there any other thing you need to add just before we go? Uh, it, it, just to say that uh, we're happy that this had been brought to out four. to the fore. You know, and it's good that we take advantage of what God has given us. Mm. Uh, it is uh, it, it is the best way to go. In fact, it has been internationally recognized as the best organic pesticide. If you go to the uh, internet, you'll find it. So, what we have on you know uh, on a platter of gold, let's. Uh, take Especially now that we are battling COVID-19 pandemic, yes. mm -hmm. are there some really quick wins that we can take advantage of? Because even in the export market, just like we, you said earlier, the NIM is we are the biggest producer of NIM in sure. the world, mm -hmm. sure. and you have countries like China, Japan, uh, India looking for the market. Yes. We also, I think, the biggest export, uh, the biggest producer of shea butter. Yes, yes. That is shea butter. That yeah. ori, yeah. she. Yeah. What yeah. we use? Uh, ori. Ori yeah. in yeah. Igbo, I think, it, at least in my own place, they yes. call it opume. Yeah. What you use yes. Yes. when for you have pain, you know, even yes. for the skin. Yes. Yes. Why is it that we're not taking advantage of this? We're the biggest producer of cassava in the world, and we're still talking oil. <laughs> uh. we, will, we will come on board very soon on the issue of uh, shea butter. Shea butter. We'll come on board very soon. So I'm, I'm preempting <laughs> you. Yes, uh, what do we have to do in future. Yeah. And uh, you know the uh, federal produce mentioned as the IFS is, is to encourage the the exporters so that at least we don't buy, we don't sell, but the premium has to come back to them. And mm. uh, if the premium come, it's Nigeria is great. Mm. Yeah. Nigeria is great. Let's mm. be part of the over one billion dollars market mm. yes. of name globally mm. because I think it's. It's about close to a billion dollars market. It's more than that. Yes, it's more than that. Much actually. more than yes, that. Yes, much it, more than the that. The oil alone mm. is up to two billion. Yes. The oil alone. Because it's Not a value chain, even in, yes. in, in name itself. Exactly. So you can go for the cake, you can go mm. for the fertilizer, you can yes. go for the oil. So you, you were asking what uh, uh, the quick quick wins. Mean, Very quickly, know. Prof, we need to go. Okay. The, the oil is easy to produce and it's, it has international market. Mm. So you can do that. In fact, what they use in, uh, the oil for, mainly in, in, as insecticide overseas, is what the, the component in that oil called azadiractin. Mm. That is the most okay. important one. Okay, I think, Prof, we need to leave it there. Perhaps we'll do another show again. Mm -hmm. I'm always available. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm always available. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Thank you. <laughs> gentlemen, for coming on the program. Mm -hmm. I've been speaking with Professor Ebenezer Okonkwa, who was the former Director General National Research Institute for Chemical Technology. He's also a professor at the University of Port Harcourt. Idrisu Agata, Director of Federal Produce Inspection Service. Thank you for coming on the program. Uh, Dafang Idisule, Deputy Director of Federal Produce Inspection Service. That's FP. IS. We've been talking about the NIM value chain and why we need to use NIM as an alternative for fumigation. I am Nancy Naji. Be the best version of yourselves. 